I'm afraid it's time to say goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. No, I don't mean you all and us. It's about the owner of a huge ship who has decided it's time to say goodbye to his ship. The ship you invested millions of dollars to build will become obsolete, rusty, or less strong, and you will have to retire it. Hello, everyone. By 2021, more than 1,000 ships disappeared like that. What has happened to them? Welcome to our channel. In this issue, we will show you what fate awaits ships that were worth millions of dollars. It's an interesting story, isn't it? Then let's get started. How to dismantle a ship in a special demolition yard. A ship is a huge mass of resources, greatly valuable to mankind. For example, the world's longest ship, the Seawise Giant, weighed about 83,000 tons in displacement. It is 458 meters long, which, if I were to stand up, would be taller than the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, or the Petronas Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur. The screw propeller alone weighs 50 tons, and the ship's rudder is a whopping 230 tons. When it is such a huge piece of steel, it cannot be simply thrown away. Therefore, Ships that reach the end of their 25 to 30 year lifespan are usually sent for dismantling. The Seawise Giant was no exception. There are several ways to dismantle a ship, which determine the cost of dismantling and the safety of the workers. In developed countries, green recycling is practiced in dry docks and shipyard piers. Demolition in dry dock is considered more environmentally friendly because it prevents toxic substances from leaking into the ocean but it is also the most expensive method of disposal. Watch how the cargo ship Cami, which ran aground off the coast of Scotland, was dismantled in an exemplary manner in 2020. The ship, which is about 90 meters long and more than 13 meters wide, was brought into a dry dock at the Kishorn port. When the water is drained with a pump, a space of 160 meters squared is created where heavy machinery can safely move. When it comes to dismantling, it is first important to remove the sewage water called bilge, which contains impurities and harmful liquids such as machine oil from the vessel. Bilge is caused by water leakage or condensation in the vessel. This water can mix with petroleum products such as fuel oil and lubricating oil in the engine room and other compartments, potentially becoming hazardous to people and the environment. This is why it must be pumped out before dismantling. Liquids such as hydraulic fluids, lubricants and fuels are also removed. All electronic equipment, furnishings and other resaleable items and equipment are removed from the vessel. Dismantling also involves separating safe from hazardous material. For example, asbestos is removed, which is properly stored and then reused after detoxification in accordance with environmental regulations. After these preparations, the hull is cut into 300 ton chunks at thermic lance and further broken down into smaller pieces at this dock. The iron, copper and aluminium are sent to a steel mill, where they are melted down into new metal products. Recycling is a cheap way to produce metals and use less ore. This kind of recycling is a very beneficial process. Method of Stranding and Dismantling Ships on a Sandy Beach As we mentioned, dry docking is a costly method of demolition. Therefore, another approach awaits many of the ships sent to demolition yards in India, Bangladesh and Pakistan. Not environmentally friendly, it is a powerful method. They run the ships aground by ramming them into the beach at high tide and then dismantle them there as if they were dry docked. This is a great show of skill by the captain and crew, as the ship may capsize when it runs aground. But the combination of a gently rolling coast, high water levels at high tide, and above all, cheap labor. That is what makes stranding a mainstream ship dismantling technique. About 80% of the world's ship dismantling takes place in Asian developing countries. 
After running aground, a ship graveyard appears on the beach. This is a very painstaking process. It is like a huge anthill, and everyone is absorbed in their work. In just three months, a medium-sized cargo ship with a discharge capacity of 40,000 tons can be dismantled by 50 workers. What is being done there is a labor-intensive operation, and safety measures are of secondary importance. But what must be done remains the same. Everything that might be of value is removed, the vessel is cut into pieces, and the scrap metal is sold. From the standpoint of environmental protection and human safety, this cannot be called the best method of dismantling. That is why there are strict regulations in Europe, and the dismantling has to be done in an accredited dismantling yard. To circumvent this regulation, ships have been sold to other parties, and their registry has been changed, and they are sent for dismantling. But that does not always work. For example, in 2018, the Rotterdam District Court found a European company guilty of violating EU law by sending ships to India and Bangladesh for dismantling. If these responses were constantly taken, the method of running ships aground on beaches would be a thing of the past in the future. At the moment, however, demolition is a popular activity on Asian beaches, and numerous ships are waiting to be dismantled there. When the dismantling is finished, a ship will disappear, leaving nothing behind but empty beaches where another vessel can be brought in. In 2010, the world's largest tanker, the Seawise Giant, closed its life. That scrap could have been turned into a new car or maybe even a ship again. And the only thing left behind as a reminder to mankind of its former self is a 36-ton anchor. This anchor is on display at the Hong Kong Maritime Museum. How to disassemble and sink a boat in advance to make it an artificial fish reef. Let us introduce another interesting method of disassembling a ship. Take the US Coast Guard patrol vessel Mohawk as an example. The Mohawk was launched in 1934 and remained in military service until 1948. For the next 30 years, Mohawk was used as a civilian pilot boat and then as a museum. But when the museum itself went bankrupt, they decided to sink the ship and the process was filmed. Of course, the Mohawk went through the necessary dismantling process before sinking and on July 2nd, 2012, it was blown up and sent to the bottom of the ocean. It is now the Mohawk Veterans Memorial Artificial Fish Reef and at the same time, a good place for divers. If you think that sinking a ship is a rare occurrence, let me hasten to tell you that it is actually a common thing. The same fate befell the US landing ship Spiegel Grove, the training ship Texas Clipper, the aircraft carrier Oris Canny, and dozens of other ships. Sinking ships to turn them into fish reefs is a great idea. Because even after their life on the sea is over, they will live on to entertain divers, and serve as a haven for small fish and other sea creatures. Dismantling a sunken ship You never know what could happen to a ship on the sea. Even with the latest navigational systems, ships sometimes run aground in shallow water, wreck, or dare to run aground to protect human lives or valuable cargo. Often, such vessels cannot be moved because the damage is too great. When it is also too difficult to transport to the dock, local dismantling becomes the only realistic and cost-effective option. This is exactly what happened to the ferry Riverdance while sailing in the Irish Sea. In 2008, a huge wave hit the ship and it ran aground near Blackpool, England. The force of the waves was so strong that much of the cargo fell over and the ship was stranded on shore, tilted 60 degrees. Despite the bad weather, the crew and passengers were rescued without major problems. It was also possible to recover some of the cargo from the vessel. The vessel was supposed to be pulled out of the shoal in February 2008, but a large number of tourists heard about the accident and visited the nearby town of Clevelys. Unfortunately, the rescue operation was not successful and the vessel was dismantled. The 150 tons of fuel was removed expeditiously. The ship's dismantling took place between April and October. 
There were some accidents, including a fire on the boat, but the project came to a successful conclusion. It is time for this video to come to a conclusion. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like if you enjoyed it. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. Then you will be the first to know when new videos are released. We will try our best to make our new videos interesting as well. We promise. Goodbye for a while. See you again. Goodbye.